Um, I, I'm kind of curious, did you participate in a lot of church activities as you were growing up? Oh, yeah, it was a big, uh, big part of my life. I remember during my high school years, I lived with my grandparents in Central California, and we had a, we were in a small mountain community, uh, and we had a little church, maybe 50, 60 people, and we couldn't support one pastor ourselves, and so we shared our pastor with the church from the bigger city uh, nearby, and we only got our pastor to speak at our church about once a month, um, and we always had these guest speakers coming in, and my grandparents were almost always the ones who would host the guest speaker at our house. Um, they always had 10, 12 people around the table on Saturday afternoons, and um, I just remember growing up just being a really theologically curious kid. I always, like I said, I, I grew up uh, God was like air, like I just, you know, I breathed it in without even knowing I was doing it. And, um, and so I was always curious about the cosmos, but also like the flood and dinosaurs and how did that line up? And, and I just had all these really interesting questions in my mind. Uh, and so I was always, you know, engaged with the church. I, I was part of my youth group. I preached in my little church. Uh, as I said, there wasn't uh, a pastor every week. And once or twice during my uh, youth, I spoke at the church and always got, you know, positive comments from the, the old ladies in the church. And they sort of set me on a path that I thought, like, you know, you'll be a pastor one day. So I guess I, I from a pretty young age, uh, had made church and religion a big part of my life. My family, my grandparents had morning and evening worship with us. We prayed before every meal. Um, we had Bible studies in our homes where people would come in and, and our living room was turned into a, a big Bible study. So, I mean, it was constant. I was, even, I was even the president of our Young Life Club for a couple of years in high school. Well, what's, uh, <laughs> what's the, the Young Life Club? Oh, it's just a campus uh, Christian club. Um, all of the faith based stuff happens um, uh, off campus or after school hours, so it's not like a conflict of church and state so much. At least it, doesn't, it didn't seem to be back then. <laughs> but uh, it, was, it was voluntary, of course, and kids that wanted to get together for l at lunch and talk about the Bible or whatever. So we did some uh, weekend activities, kind of like youth group, but oriented around the high school. Oh, okay. Well, uh, and I have to ask this, and I, I admit it's it's really kind of jokingly that I asked this. Did you ever consider the position that dinosaurs never existed? Um, I mean, I guess it never dawned on me that dinosaurs never existed, mostly because we have fossils <laughs> of dinosaurs. So um, I guess always, and I, I just, as a young boy, of course, I just fascinated by dinosaurs like everybody else. Uh, so I, I just... Uh, and, and honestly, like my family and my church never forced me to figure that out. They, they were never like, you have to believe that Adam and Eve were walking around in the Garden of Eden with dinosaurs. Like nobody ever like forced that opinion on me. So I, I guess in the back of my mind, I always figured there was a way to reconcile the timing of, of uh, you know, the dinosaurs and then the flood wiped them out somehow and then... Um, and then people went on after that. So which would mean that dinosaurs and people would have to have coexisted on the planet. Um, but I guess I just never like pressed into the problems with that. Yeah. Well, the, the reason why I said that it was uh, more in a joking manner that I asked that question is because I don't know if you've heard, but there's this popular group out there now called Christians Against Dinosaurs. And uh, I, I find the fact that they that that they disregard you know evidence when it's given to them, uh, you know, uh, pretty astounding. Like like that substantial amount of evidence uh, is pretty astounding. Um, but um, yeah. It's one thing to not believe in God because you can't find any positive evidence. Another, it's another thing altogether to, to deny the positive evidence that you do have for something else. It's just well, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if you've heard the arguments coming from this particular group, but like they say that uh, archaeologists like carve and polish uh, rocks and into bones and whatnot. So I mean, they have this whole apologetic set up for explaining why there's bones and whatnot. It, it's a big. It's a big, it's a big hoax, like the moon landing. Yeah. <laughs>
Um, but uh, getting back to to our original line of questioning uh, here, <laughs> discussion. Um, so, what made you really want to become a pastor? Um, that's a great question. I mean, I think. I mean, I I, I, I don't want to generalize about this too much, uh, but. I, I would assume that most young people, as they're in college and they're trying to figure out what do they want to do with their life, there's one part of it that's what do I like, like what do I naturally gravitate towards. And then there's probably another part that is what do I get positive feedback from others about. Like so when I do something, other people say, wow, you're really good at that. You know. Um, or you're really good with your hands. You should be a doctor, like or a surgeon. Or you're really good with um, like mechanical things. Like you have a natural ability, and your dad would affirm that, and you would say, "Oh, maybe I want to be an engineer or something, or a, a mechanic, or or uh, you explain things well." So you know, maybe you think, "Oh, I should be a teacher." So I guess it was my natural interest in philosophy. And I think if I had grown up in a secular home, I probably would have majored in philosophy. Um, and I think growing up in a religious home, philosophy gets interpreted as theology. And so that was just a natural predisposition for me. Um, and then I did get a ton of affirmation. So I started, my, my subjects uh, in high school that I excelled at were math and English, actually, um, which typically are two sides of a coin. Um, you know, often bo both are of interest to people. So I was a little confused, and I've always been a, a sort of a polymath. Like I'm not that good at everything, but I, I'm interested in everything. But um, so when I went to college, I thought, well, I like English, but nobody's going to make any money uh, teaching English. So maybe I should go into science. And so I majored. I started off majoring in physics and math. Um, actually, slightly embarrassing fact: um, I actually started off my first major in college was astrophysics um, because I wanted to be an astronaut. Um, I know that's super rare among young kids, um, but I was the one little boy that wanted to be an astronaut. And uh, I figured I would never go into the military, partly because my religion was uh, pacifist. And so I knew that I would probably never be a pilot uh, and go into, into space as a pilot. So I figured the only other way to go into space is as a scientist. And uh, I really wanted to do that. But I very quickly uh, figured out that I was too much of a people person for the lab, and the lab kind of bored me. And so I switched to English and history and pre med and a bunch of other majors. And when I finally landed on theology, which was, the, I felt like the thing I was avoiding. Like, I kind of, I mean, I liked it. It was more like a hobby to me. Um, and the other thing, there was a negative sort of stereotype at my university where the guys, and it was almost always guys because. Uh, in our denomination, women at that point couldn't even be pastors. Um, we're still trying to figure out in the Seventh-day Adventist Church that they're trying to figure out whether uh, women can be ordained as pastors still to this day. Um, so all these young men in the theology department, um, the joke was that they, they couldn't cut it at any other occupation or any other profession or, or major. And, um, and they were also, the other joke was that they all just wanted to get married right away. Like they were super anxious to hook up with a woman and get married. So it was not super popular on campus to be a Theo major. Um, you were just kind of not very well respected. So I was avoiding it and avoiding it. I didn't want to be with those people, but I finally gave in and my family really affirmed that choice. They were so proud of me. And of course, you know, what kid doesn't want their parents to be proud of them, so. It was yeah. sort of that combination of things. Yeah. Uh, did you ever really feel a lot of pressure from your parents growing up, like as far as uh, your beliefs go or anything? I know you said that, that your parents didn't really push, uh, uh, you know, Christianity on you too hard. It was just kind of like a duh thing. But I, I, didn't, I didn't know if maybe they, you know, uh, pushed it on you like elsewhere or anything like that. No, not really. And, and I think I never really tested them about it because I just was naturally inclined you know, I, I loved theology discussions and I loved church. I mean, sometimes, you know, as a kid, I was bored with the organ music or whatever in my church. But um, I'm, I'm also kind of a natural leader. And so organizing people to accomplish things together is sort of comes naturally to me. So I thought, oh, the church, that's what church is. And I always had this, I mean, I, it sounds pretty arrogant, but 
as a kid in high school, I always thought like I could probably run this church better than this pastor. Like it just seems like it's not this complicated. Like it could be way better. Um, so I just had a natural. My, so my parents never really needed to like force me in that direction. So I never really had that pressure. It was just natural for me. I just wanted to. The pressure, I guess, the one little bit of pressure was in high school because we were Seventh Day Adventists. Um, our Sabbath, like like Jews, begins uh, Friday night and ended on Saturday night, and so I wasn't allowed to go to like dances and football games and any kind of Friday night activities. And ev everyone knows Friday night is king in high school, so um, that was a bummer. But I, I really, I had internalized my faith so deeply that. I would never have articulated that my grandparents wouldn't let me do Friday night things. It was that I chose not to. Um, and there were definitely moments where I felt pretty bummed out about it. And, but it just was never a subject of debate. I think I really wanted to please my grandparents and I wanted to please God. And, and I, would, I would never have risked it. <laughs> hmm. So I guess you never really felt yourself having to force yourself to do or believe anything. You, I mean, it just kind of came naturally then. Yeah, it really did. Um, it's again like, you know, like air or like fish in water. It was just so natural. It's like sometimes you'll hear Christians say like, I can't even imagine what it would be like not to have God in my life. Like I can't even imagine not being a believer. And people genuinely believe, mean that. They mean like, I can't imagine what my life would be like without God in it. And that's exactly how I felt. I mean, it was just never even a question. I suppose somewhere in the back of my mind, I knew there were people who didn't believe in God, but I never really thought about it. And I never really, I never thought they would be very much of a, of even a large minority or anything to really worry about. Hmm. 